Number 57. A ship set sail from Rotterdam, the Netherlands, heading due north at 7 meters per second relative to the water. Okay. The local ocean current is 1.5 meters per second in a direction of 40 degrees north of east. What is the velocity of the ship relative to the earth? So here's a little picture I have. Okay. The uh, ship is heading due north at a velocity of 7 meters per second. Now it's important to know what is that velocity in relation to? Well, that velocity will be in relation to the water, right? Because that's what they say. They say relative to the water. Okay, so that's the velocity of the ship relative to the water. Great. Then it also says that there's a local ocean current, right? At 150 meters per second. So let's write that in. That is actually, let me just change the color. That is 1.50, excuse me, meters per second. And it's at a direction of 40 degrees north to east. So that's the yellow vector here. Now, it doesn't tell us, though. It just says the current, right? It basically just says the water velocity is 1.5. Well, they didn't tell us, though, relative to what? So when they're not telling you what it's in relation to, the default is going to be it's relative to the earth, right? But I'm going to plug that in. So I know the velocity of the water relative to the earth, and that is 1.50 meters per second. So now what we need to find is the velocity of the ship relative to the earth, aka we want to find the velocity of the ship relative to the earth. So I need to find this. Now I don't have either of them here. So what I first want to do is I first want to think about, well, what would this be? Like what, what vectors or what velocities do I have to add? So consider this formula right here. All right. So the velocity of AC is equal to the velocity of AB plus the velocity of BC. So what is uh, your A in this problem? Well, the A in this problem is the ship, right? And what's your C in the problem? Well, that's the Earth. Okay, then the only one that's missing is the B. What's the B? Well, the only other thing in the problem is the water. So that's what the B will be. So to set this up, this term will now be the velocity then of the ship relative to the water plus then the velocity of the water relative to the earth. So this is what I need to do. I have to add these two vectors, okay? So do I know them? Well, wait a minute, yeah, I do, right? Look, the velocity of the ship relative to the water, here it is. They told it to me, okay? And the velocity of the water relative to the earth, wait a minute, they told that to me too. So guess what this actually is, guys? This is a very straightforward resultant vector problem. Remember, in order, if I need to sum this vector with this vector, that will give me then the resultant vector. All right, so basically this is, the resultant vector will equal the sum between vector one and vector two. Remember, we have to do this through components. So let me put my, let me write my component table. Okay, I have my X components, my Y components, I have vector one, vector two, and when I add them together, both the X and Y separately, I will get my resultant. All right, so let's first find the X and Y components of vector one, and I'm calling vector one the velocity with um, of the ship relative to the water, okay? So that's this vector right here. That's fairly straightforward. It's just a north vector, so it has no X component, and the Y component is purely 7.00 right? Meters per second. Now that takes care of that. And the second vector is now the velocity of the water with respect to the earth, right? That's what I detailed over here. So let's break that vector up into its components. So I'm going to draw the little line there. Okay. This is now the X coordinate and this straight on up. Well, it's at an angle. Really should be nice and straight. That's not straight. One more time. That's good. And that black one will represent the y, okay? So remember, to solve for the x, we're going to use cosine, okay? So uh, vx, oh, sorry, that's in red. So vx will equal cosine of theta times the initial velocity. So vx will equal cosine of 40 times 1.50. So for number 2, just plug it into the calculator, cosine of 40 times 1.5. And we get 1.15. So 
So that goes in the table, 1.15. Then do the y value. So this one's now going to be sine of theta times the initial velocity. So this is going to be sine of 40 times 1.50. And again, just simply plug it into the calculator. So sine of 40 times 1.5, and we get a value of 0 0.5. 964, right? 964. Plug that in into the table. Great. Now just add them all up. So this will be 1.15, right? Now the y should be 7.96. I got to cut the 4 off because of significant figures. So now here's my resultant. Cool. Remember now the shortened resultant formula uh, that we can do, right, to solve for it. It's the square root of the sum of all the x components of all the vectors plus the sum of all the y components of all the vectors squared, right? So simply just take this, take these summed values here and plug them in. So we have now 1.15 squared plus 7.96 squared. And take out your handy dandy calculator and second square root of 1.15 squared plus 7.96 squared and we get 8.04. So 8.04, and that is meters per second. And that is our answer. Remember the resultant vector was the uh, velocity of the ship with respect to the earth. So I'll just write it down here, 8.04 meters per second. All right guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. I thank you so much.